is a presentation of treatment of chronic dissection with aneurysmal degeneration using three conformable thoracic endoprosthesis. Uh, this is a 7 year old male, poorly controlled hypertension, uh, multiple bilateral renal cysts. Um, he presented with back pain, abdominal pain, and uncontrolled blood pressure. In the ER, he had an abdominal and pelvic CT scan, which was followed up, up with a chest CTA. And this showed that he had um, cholelithiasis, contracted gallbladder, but the main findings were a thoracic abdominal aneurysm uh, with a maximum diameter of 6.2 centimeters. On the CT component, uh, there was a dissection uh, in the ascending from mid descending thoracic aorta distally. He also had some dissection in affecting the left subclavian aorta and the, and the remainder of the descending thoracic aorta. These are what the studies look like. And you can see that the dissection begins distal to the subclavian. The has been there for some time. Um, the largest segment is in the descending thoracic aorta. Tapers down at the diaphragm with a significant compression of the true lumen. Right urine lorry comes off the true lumen. Uh, left kidney, although pacified, is, there's a barely visible uh, seat, uh, and barely visible re left urine lorry. Um, and <coughs> here you can see that the immediately adjacent to the subclavian looks fairly normal like there's a good landing zone and the dissection begins distally uh, and as you can see uh, on this view the, the celiac and the SMA come off the true lumen and as we mentioned the left renal artery was difficult to visualize. We opted to treat this patient the preoperative plan was to uh, stent, uh, open the left renal artery and place three thoracic endographs uh, sparing the visceral segment. Uh, because of the extensive nature of the uh, dissection and the coverage which was anticipated we did opt to put in a spinal drain uh, preoperatively this worked well and was continued throughout the perioperative period. Uh, we did do image fusion and so these marks uh, from the image fusion represent from top to bottom celiac, SMA, right renal and left renal artery. Uh, these were all marked by um, taking the preoperative CT scan and fusing this on top of the patient. In this case we actually fused using DynaCT. Uh, the arteriogram uh, confirmed uh, the adequacy of these markings. Again, slightly off in the right renal, for example, you can actually modify this uh, once the uh, stiff wires are in place and actually uh, so that they, you can correct any abnormalities really in the fusion. Uh, we cannulate the left renal artery fairly well. You can see that beyond the area of compression as, a, as the true lumen, which is intact, uh, crosses the false lumen into the left renal artery, so it's not evulsed. And you can see that the kidney actually perfused uses uh, fairly well uh, beyond that. So the plan was to actually uh, salvage that rather than to sacrifice it. And so um, again it's simply confirming the presence of the, of the left renal lorry. So uh, using IVUS we confirmed that, that the, the true lumen placement of the um, curved Lundequist wire. Um, we use IVUS in all of these patients. Uh, once the true lumen is, is established, we never actually uh, remove that wire uh, to ensure there's, ne there's never going to be uh, displacement uh, of the stent graft of the wire into the false lumen. So here you can see it, we've been fairly aggressive with it. Uh, these fusion marks representing the aorta in red, the left subclavian, the left carotid, um, and the origin of large origin of the nominate in these uh, green marks. Uh, once we get this in place, of course, we'll, uh, we'll confirm and here you see the flanges and typical excluder are just right at the, the slend of the left subclavian artery, which is where we're going to deploy this. <coughs> so this was then deployed basically in fairly standard fashion for the C tag. You see it's deployed into 50%. Uh, really, it was not particularly uh, angulated, so we really didn't feel that we needed to uh, angulate the um, proximal end of the uh, device, although that's certainly a nice option to have. So we went ahead and actually deployed it, then brought up a second graft. This was the plan was to take this down to uh, the distance still a uh, thoracic aorta need be extend down to uh, the uh, celiac artery. Mm. Uh, here we can see it's in place <coughs> and the device was then uh, deployed. This was going to be short of the celiac artery uh, and we can actually see at this point that um, it is right above the uh, celiac artery <coughs> based upon these fusion marks. <coughs> We opted to extend this, you know, we moved it into the uh, transverse plane, the image intensifier into the transverse plane and extended this uh, using a third uh, C-tag uh, and plan was to deploy this fairly close to the uh, celiac artery and you can see it's been deployed. Mm. 
At this point in time, the attention to, uh, then turned to the infrarenal aorta. Um, and w again, we got our, with our fusion marks, we'd obviously confirmed the origin of the left renal artery. Uh, once again, you can confirm, and this time you can actually see um, how the left renal has not been avulsed. And we deployed just below the origin of the left renal artery um, and then opted to. Um, pass a catheter into the left renal and to bridge this. In this case, we bridged it um, with um, a VBX. <coughs> so stent graft the aorta is in place. You can see the false limb is still filling. And then we place a device into the uh, left renal artery. And you can see the completion there with good anti-grade filling. Post-operative CT scan actually looked remarkably good. Almost the entire true lumen of the thoracic aorta um, was uh, excluded. And you'll start, start seeing it refill uh, distally. You can actually see some pacification of it. As you would expect, the visceral segment's intact. The left renal stent looked pretty good. Uh, and the infrarenal segment um, really was uh, was stable. Uh, you can see this again based in, in two other views. <coughs> Uh, confirming exclusion of the majority of this um, and the plan is simply to follow this patient up and obviously we're going to look for any evidence of continued enlargement. Uh, that completes this uh, presentation. Thank you very much.